Hello everybody, hope you are safe and healthy and all that good stuff. I really do. <laughs> Sorry for dipping off the internet for a second. I'm having a, uh, minor struggle, if you will. I truly do be like that. But regardless, here I am. My state has finally declared a shelter in place order and now I'm home all day, every day for I think three weeks or so. But anyways, I have three little video topics of sorts that I wanted to definitely do right off the bat. And one of those is line art. I definitely get lots of questions about line art and I wanted to do a series of videos anyways with line art being one of them. So yeehaw my boys. As a young little noodle in elementary elementary school. You have probably been heckled by some elderly art teacher about the elements of art, how important they are, etc. I know I was. Our teacher was really, really particular. <laughs> she banned erasers from our elementary school class, saying there are no mistakes in art. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> Just kidding. But you'd probably look at um, an anime drawing of sorts and think that elements of art could in no way have anything to do with it, right? I mean, that's why art teachers hate anime drawings, right? Personally, I disagree. Maybe your art teacher hated your anime drawings because you were quote unquote rejecting the principles of art and you're basing your work off of fictional pieces with no way to truly kind of guide yourself into improvement or follow any sort of definable guidelines shrug. Maybe they hated your drawings because they were not what they were asking you to do. Maybe they hated your drawings because they thought they were ugly. <laughs> Big shrug, who knows. But what sucks about these art teachers is, in my opinion, they are too rigorous with these art rules. Perhaps they want to keep you in line, so to speak, so after you're comfortable and a master at these elements, so to speak, that you can eventually learn to bend and break them yourself. But I feel like this overly strict attitude to these quote-unquote rules kind of deters young artists from pursuing it. For instance, I don't know, I feel like they're stepping their foot down too hard and really roasting kids from, you know, their own forms of experimenting because they're not following the quote-unquote rules. It kind of hinders people, in my opinion, more so than it helps. As I have said and will always say, anime art is still art. There are still a lot of skills and procedures you employ to create a piece. And you are not chained to the floor by rules. And I cannot stand the environment anime artists are brought up on that says you can't draw unless it's in a specific way. It's kind of hypocritical in my opinion. And no assault to anyone, but I often see artists who wanted to draw anime and they were squashed by art teachers or whoever and then they try to force themselves to go a realistic route and then those same artists really struggle to find a style, they never really maintain their passion, and they ultimately died out of drawing, if that makes sense. Like all the time I see someone who drew some pretty not so bad like anime art, but because whoever was teaching them or whatever, art teachers or friends, colleagues, whoever, they were kind of squashing this, these anime style drawings and then they forced themselves to try to be realistic and there's just something always lacking and I feel like they really stop themselves from experimenting and also like enjoying art. Like I always talk about how I don't believe any drawings are quote unquote ugly but a lot of those drawings are ugly. You know what I'm saying? They just, they lack inspiration and instead of creating something that they enjoy, something that's visually appealing and something that has a purpose or meaning or communicate something. It's just like I am making thing that follows rules to follow those rules and it just it's really disappointing. And I think it's pretty reprehensible that artists are turned off from their passion by what I would say are bad mentors. If someone's trying too rigorously to follow rules and stops what they're doing and changes it up and tries to follow in some dumb predetermined footsteps, I think they're not doing their job right. They're not a good art teacher and they shouldn't be teaching art. IMO. I personally would like to to change that today by trying to explain the elements of art as it pertains to your personal drawings in a way you personally will hopefully understand. And today we're talking about line art. Line art is often the bread and butter of art illustrations. It is more important than you may have thought. In our noggins we interpret lines as outlines for our animal characters or what have you, but in more technical terms a quote-unquote line refers to a quote-unquote point moving in space. It can also be described as a distance between two points. For instance, from root to tip of the hair you drew is technically two points in space that you connected by a line. We understand it's a piece of hair visibly by the line you draw connecting those points. Pretty simple. I am all. Even if 
you don't immediately realize it, anime illustrations contain the elements of art as any other piece would. You still will be able to identify space, color, shape, form, value, etc. from a professional anime illustration just the same as like a painting in a museum. Lines in art are just as important within these elements. Let's talk about lines, my boys! Before going into your generic line art tutorial that I am sure thousands of other artists have already done, I want to explain basics first and then kind of introduce you guys how to interpret that into your anime art or furry art or tumblr or whatever the heck you draw try and help you out whether it be traditional digital etc you shouldn't think of your line art as necessarily one entity like here's my line art <laughs> does that make sense but it's like a combination of a bunch of different types of lines that you've combined to make visually the image that you're trying to make and there's all these different types of lines you have curved lines horizontal and vertical lines jagged lines freehand lines mechanical lines continuous lines broken lines thick and thin lines all that good juicy business so let's talk about those kind of what they mean and how you use them so i'll start off with horizontal lines within the art elements they convey a feeling of being calm or at rest for instance think of a background where the horizon is straight across and the various things in the background like uh, trees or mountains or buildings they are level with this flat straight line they are parallel to that straight line in the horizon right they illustrate serenity and in dynamic illustrations they sometimes have backgrounds like tilted or curved or with crazy perspectives with, which disrupts the space that makes sense to you guys they can also suggest distance for instance showing how far apart various objects are horizontally to each other then vertical lines suggest height as they are perpendicular to the earth as opposed to our horizontal comrades they reach towards the sky sometimes communicating almost something like reaching towards the heavens like spirituality or um, for instance religious imagery there's very long tall buildings you know architecture is very uh, tall which is why cathedrals are so just huge they're believed to kind of reach towards the heavens sometimes they communicate strength or for instance like a larger than life mood the combination of those two conveys stability so think of like an intricately drawn like wardrobe with all your neat lines and such like if you're doing a perspective drawing you'd probably do something like that they convey stability solid in place etc then you've got your diagonal lines which unlike our vertical and her horizontal friends do not line up with the horizon they portray motion for instance raindrops they have varying diagonal lines and you've seen them before right and even though the image is not actively moving you understand it's in motion you can see it and you know register that in your brain as oh it's raining those are moving raindrops the same thing can be said for instance in like dramatic manga panels with those lines sharp diagonal you know moving out from a shocked person or during an intense moment or during motion you and i understand that as like movement right so that's an example and then we have curved lines which can suggest a pleasing sensual energy or calmness and it can also point your eyes in certain directions i've read about them you know representing like the curves of the human body which shrug sure but in backgrounds can kind of guide your eyes towards you know various directions and more uh for instance like soft calming visually pleasing images you have more soft round boys instead of like sharp blunt objects so like a cutesy moe kind of pretty soft type of drawing for instance you'd probably have like lots of soft things like pillows or like round <laughs> foods stuff like that that makes sense and then as opposed to that you have mechanical lines which convey rigidness or like control things are a certain way for a reason almost you've got broken lines which i've heard described as like insubstantial or like fleeting like think quick like in um i've seen in a manga panel before which i'll try to find a visual example but if i can i can't but there was like barely any lines and like the hair was not one continuous line but it was broken lines and it symboled this girl like falling or something like that and even though it's such a simple image you understand it as her falling and i think that's pretty neat and then you have your obvious like thick lines and thin lines which i'm sure you and i can figure out you know what that means thick lines strength thin lines delicacy and softness all right and at this 
point, you may be like, what the heck does this have to do with my anime line art? You may not notice up front, but these are all things we kind of subconsciously use or understand when creating or enjoying looking at. But all right, boys, let's switch into tutorial mode. Now that we understand all of this, we can create a line art. So I'll have prepared for you today a little sketch of sorts. Have your sketch at the ready, and then I will draw a line art as an example. So it makes a line art look really good it is one with varying widths. I'm sure you guys have seen, you know, someone drawing with very thin lines and then they come in and thicken them or, you know, stuff like that, which kind of isn't the best idea. You want to sort of draw, if you can, where the line tapers off. So start it off thick and let it trail off, if you will. But it's okay if you need to go in and thicken them. As you're going about this, following your sketch and such, think about dimensions and shape and try to employ what you just learned from those types of lines and such. Like a lot of mouths are drawn as like two lines that aren't fully connected. And you can think of that kind of like a broken line. It's not like a super important detail to anime artists. They like very subtle, soft features and such. I saw um, a way to go about your line art is start off your main size lines with your natural papers and such at a, at a size that you feel is right. And then go in with more thin details and also thicken lines that you feel need to be thickened more. If you use vector instead of raster, sometimes there's ways that you can actually like modify lines so that you drag or something and they thicken at one point. Something you can do. You can use lines to kind of indicate a shadow when you thicken one end and contour one edge of a line, make it kind of darker. That makes sense. You can use lines to kind of suggest 3D shapes. You can use hatching, cross hatching to make textures, etc. Pretty, pretty simple. And for those of you who ask about the inevitable brush settings and such, I typically, honestly, God, just use the defaults or like random tools. I personally believe that you can make any tool work for you with it with practice, so personally I usually use the defaults until I feel pretty solid with them and then I might tweak them if I need to, but the defaults, I I like them. They work for me. I, there's nothing magical or special I do to make my lines any different from anybody else's. That's just naturally how I draw. And honest to god, that's pretty much it. I do have some other personal tips to throw in there also that I'll do before ending this. One is what I learned from a, a smidge, like a splash of being in a drawing class. Some people struggle with like really thick scratchy looking lines versus long flowing lines etc. What I recommend to you, you're in too close. You're just kind of you know edging away at your line and what you want to do is zoom out and try to make the stroke with one fleeting hand motion. Which may sound hard but you will get used to it. What I would suggest for practice is to draw two points and practice drawing a straight line by quickly moving your hand across, getting a feel for that, and then and afterwards you can go back to what you're doing like for instance drawing hair and then and it doesn't always end up perfect the first time so you might have to do it a couple times you might have to control z and do it a few times to get it right it, it'd be like that but then you'll get your thin flowing you know hair lines that you want so badly another tip and this is just for me personally i see people really struggle sometimes to draw things and do it over and over again and take eons and then you're pissed off about it what i suggest instead is adjust your sketch first instead of struggling with your proportions or what have you. So just make a new layer if you need to sketch in a new color or something and try adjusting what you can as much as possible with the sketch before going back and struggling with your line art. You might see me do this a couple times actually in my speed paint. Like for instance, when I draw like circles, what I do is I'll um, click with my mouse and make a perfect circle or I'll use a tool or something under a different color and then I line over that. Or when I'm drawing hands and they look really dumb, <laughs> I'll delete the line art and sketch it again to make it look a little better and then try line arting again after that instead of just struggling and erasing and redrawing because then it turns out like that frustrating scratchy look that I don't want. So really that's about it. If I have any other tips or details or something, I'll make sure to find a way to get that to you guys. I will also try to make a written post as well and link it below with static images and such if that helps you guys as well. If you need to watch this multiple times, I don't mind. Go ahead and always, of course, 
course, leave your questions, comments, concerns, etc. below. I read them all, even if I don't have a chance to answer all of them, especially with all the hecticness that's been going on in my personal life, the pandemic. I read them, might not get a chance to answer them, but I, I do try. So if this was helpful to you, give it a thumbs up. It'd be a great honor if you subscribed, it helped me out so much. And if you are one of the people asking like, oh my god, you're so underrated, like why aren't you more popular or something like that, big shrug, but if you want to help me out, it'd be super awesome if you could share my video or videos, link them on your Facebook, your Tumblr, your Twitter, whatever, that would help me out so, so much. But if not, in the meantime, watching them is good enough for me, honestly. And before wrapping this bad boy up, I wanted to say a big, big spicy thank you because I went from hitting 1k to hitting 4k subscribers, and even though that's really tiny, I really, really appreciate it. It's really exciting and I'm pumped. I also want to say thank you because I hit 1k on my Instagram, which I never thought I'd hit. Very big thank you. I really appreciate it. Also been getting followers on Twitter also, and I appreciate that as well. I really, really do. And been having more people pop up in our Discord server, which is awesome. I'm not super active. I apologize, especially again during this pandemic hecticness, trying to be more active now that I'm home. But I really, thankfully you guys have joined and are sharing your art. I do have an art channel in there. You're free to post whatever art, comment about art, ask for art tips, whatever. I have a general channel, of course, for just chit chatting. I have a shit post channel and a few other things. So you guys are more than welcome to join if you'd like. Thank you so, so much. I did have to close my Etsy temporarily because of the pandemic. So I'm sorry if you wanted to buy stuff from me. I'll open it as soon as this hecticness is over. Hopefully with new awesome items to give you guys. And I will be updating Patreon, even though I'm freshly updated and I don't have much on there or patrons yet. I will start adding stuff to it. Even if there's no one there, there'll be stuff waiting if anyone decides to join. It would help me out quite a bit. So. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so, so much, everybody. Please stay safe and stay healthy during all this hoopla and keep drawing. Thank you so much. Goodbye.